Hi, I'm Glenn Everett, Master of Machines. I'm with Ross from Survivor Car Australia magazine. Now he tells me he's got a very interesting story for us. In fact, it's about a car called Mothball, a suburban barn find. So how about we jump in the Valiant and go and check this thing out. So Ross, tell me what you know about this car, this mothball as they call it. Well Glenn, I heard a whisper through a mate of mine who told me to give this guy Neil a call. He's got an Aussie muscle car that's been entombed in a shed for the last 28 years. 28 years? Mate, I'd be expecting the car to be covered in dust, flat tyres, I don't know what it is. Jeez, well I can't wait to see it. I almost feel like Indiana Jones on a crusade trying to find the Holy Grail. Yeah, it feels like that. I can't <laughs> wait either, mate. It's exciting. Oh, it's not too far away. It's just up the road here. Awesome. This should be good, mate. Definitely. G'day, Neil. Ross. From Survivor Car. How are you going? Yeah, we spoke over the phone. Good to meet you. And? Glenn. Please don't meet you, Glenn. You're here you to check out the mothball. Definitely. Let's go and check it out. Well, fellas, this is where the mothball has lived for the last 28 years. In behind all these trees here. She's certainly boxed in. Just mind the branches, fellas. Mind the branches. Yes, mothball, fellas. I'll leave it with you. Enjoy. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Mate, I think we just found the Holy Grail. Red Pepper XAGT sedan. 28 years it's been sitting here. And 28 years of dust. It's like a time capsule. Mate, it smells like 1972. 351 four speed. Gotta love that. Look at the trim in it though. The carpets you could do with a vacuum and a clean, but the dash, the seats, the trim. I'm impressed. Incredible, mate. See, you hear these things. But you really see them. They do exist. Yep, suburban barn find. Let's check the engine out. Yeah. Check out the dust on this thing. It's unreal. It's all there. Yeah. What about the VIN? JG33. MD11897K, mate. She's the real deal. She's a GT. All original, mate. It's, it's got a manifold on it. Manifold and holly carb as well. Extractors. Back secondary carb. Yeah, she's had some day two mods. That battery, geez, it'd be flat as a pancake, I reckon. It's a big battery though, isn't it? Yeah. These days they're so much smaller, but that thing would crank a, uh, a Perkins diesel over, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder how many miles are on it. Let's have a look. This is the stuff dreams are made of, mate. <laughs> Looks like original paint too. It does. Jeez, would you polish it or just wash it? <laughs> It'd be faded maybe. Yeah. How many miles are on it, mate? 55,000. This service sticker says it's overdue. <laughs> By about 28 years. <laughs> Geez, I tell you what, I reckon that mileage would be genuine too. Yeah, I, I dare say so, mate. Look at the dash pad. No Look at the cracks. steering wheel. No cracks in the wheel either, in the rim. And, and also the inserts are still there. The other way you can tell too with low mileage cars, if you look at stuff like light switches and even the gear knob, if you look at the gear knob, all the white lettering for the shift pattern is still intact. Now she's certainly a low mile survivor, mate. Look at the roof lining. It's, it's like new. The trim, the seats. This thing would clean up spectacularly and I would kill for this car. Well it ticks all the boxes, red pepper, four speed. Eight grand taco, 140 mile per hour speedo, hell yeah. And I just look back at that special vehicle operations image with Ford prepping those phase fours, the red four door sedans. For me, that's the epitome. Phase four through and through, and this is about as close as you're gonna get. That's <laughs> right, if it wasn't for the supercar scare we would have saw Alan Moffat driving one of these around the mountain. Exactly. I could just about bet one thing, and I bet you that would be that Neil probably wouldn't sell us this car. <laughs> no, I don't reckon it'd be for sale, but it, it's the ideal survivor to, to preserve, to recommission, get on back on the road. It's got such a story to tell, you know. We just, just wonder how it ended up here. 
Yeah, I mean, what sort of story revolves around this car? How could a car be stuck in a shed for 28 years? A car like this, I mean, you'd want to be out driving it, wouldn't you? You wouldn't get me out of this thing. Or me. Got the keys there? Oh, good. Get the boot. Got the original boot spoiler, phase three. Jeez. Yeah, she's a fiberglass too. Extensions, is that right? That's right. Yeah, carryover. What a nice boot, that. Obviously, the spare's gone missing. Jeez, have a look at how good the paint is on the wheel arches and the inner rear quarters. I'm a bit scared to touch this boot, Matt. I wouldn't want to. Well, I suppose it is torn, but still, I want to be respectful of the car. Have a look at the fuel tank. I know it's got surface rust on it, but have a look at how good the gal looks still. It's got that fresh new tank look about it. Under the parcel shelf is mint. And the foam behind the rear seat, have a look at it. It's fresh, it looks like new. This thing is definitely original mileage. Check out the exhaust tips have been changed. Yeah, the rectangular tips they normally have. Yeah. Nine inch. Jeez, check out the sway bar on the thing, will you? Yes. Have a look at the extension, the brackets. Somebody's put that on. So low. Uh, it's got the HO fin drums. It's even got the crayon mark still on the uh, nine inch center. I reckon this car was modified back in the day, so it had a little bit more oomph in it. So Ross, in a nutshell, what we've got here is an XA GT four door. Looks like matching numbers, red pepper, low mileage, been sitting here for 28 years and these number plates PP351 what does that mean? Glenn I reckon there's more to this suburban barn find that meets the eye I reckon it's time to go and speak to Neil. Sounds good to me mate let's do it. So Neil thanks so much for having us over to look at this hidden treasure we really appreciate it tell us where it all started for you with this car. Well it goes back uh, 1987 thereabouts a mate of mine uh, had the car and he um, wanted to unload the car and he was wanted a couple of dollars. He was running short of a few bob and he came around and see me and said, would you be interested in buying the car? And I indicated to him and said, look mate, I'm not really into cars. I've got a car that works. I'm happy with the one I've got. So he went off and he came back and he had a crack at me again the second time. And I did again. I said, listen, I'm not interested in the car. You know? And then the third time he came back and he said, listen, do me a favour. I said, I, I'm a little bit short of a dollar. I said, can you help us out? I said, with that, I said, okay, you've got me. So I gave him $5,000 for the car. The registration ran out, and then I just drove it into the backyard, and I left it there. I think it would have been two or three years. The grass had grown over it, and it wasn't for my father indicating to me, look, you better do something about that car. Get it out of the backyard where the grass has grown over because it'll be, um, it'll be a rust bucket before long. So there we pushed it into this particular shed and there it has stayed since that day. So back in 1987 for three months we drove it around and then from that particular point it has not moved a wheel. My very good mate Dave and I went off to an auction one day at Shannon's and there was a car being auctioned there, a GT Falcon and uh, happened to be a HO. It went for $600,000 if I can recall and I couldn't believe, you know, a Falcon of that vintage going for that sort of money. So my attention certainly changed and attitude changed towards the, the mothball here, as we call it, right? So done a bit of research on the car and we found some interesting things that we're trying to get to the bottom of. So Dave and I went exploring for the bill sheet. We took the seats out and, and we found it in the boot. And there was a number there under the engine, double T, stamped on the D block of the engine and we thought, well, what would this be all about? And as it is today, we're still trying to find the bottom of that, you know? The guards on the front of the car are a little bit wider than normal GTs. Looking for the history of these cars, that the Hayes 4s apparently had wider guards on the front to take the larger wheels. So it's become sort of an intriguing sort of adventure for us in the car, you know? It's uh, become a very good interest to us now. So we'll probably, Dave and I will um, put our heads together and uh, maybe get it going. So Dave, I believe your friendship with Neil goes back some time. Yes, I met Neil in 77 and we've been best mates ever since. Tell us about the time the car got left at the pub. When Neil first got the car, he was driving it. Uh, I think he had a little bit of rego left on it. And uh, we decided we'd go to the pub for a couple of beers, which uh, went a little longer than a couple. And we couldn't drive back, so we walked back. And I think it was about two days later, we went down to the 
pub to get the car, and there it was, um, which certainly wouldn't happen today. If we Still left sitting it. there. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. Tell us a bit about what you know about the uh, previous owner to Neil uh, Mick. They used to call him Stickman um, because he uh, drove that car like it was a hot rod all the time. And uh, I remember he was going to Bathurst one time and um, I don't know what he was doing, probably around uh, over 130 uh, miles an hour in those days and he got picked up on the way to Bathurst and then he got picked up again on the way back. So tell us about the search for the original first owner of the vehicle. That must have been quite lengthy. We didn't know the exact house or address or even name of the original owner at that time. And Neil caught up with Mick and um, got a general area which incorporated, I think, about three or four suburbs. You know, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't that accurate. And we spent nights and nights and weeks just walking the streets, knocking on doors to see if anybody owned a red 72 GT. And, um, oh, we got chased. <laughs> we got barked at. He said it was a panel beater or a mechanic that lived close to uh, uh, Holmes Ford where they, they bought it. And we shopped around all of the panel beaters and finally found one. Oh, yes, that's, I know the car, I know the person, and how do you know that? <laughs> it's my brother. <laughs> so that's the way we, we, we traced it back and uh, went to meet the owner, who was a, a gentleman called Pat. And um, we found we were only about two streets away from where we stopped looking. <laughs> if, we'd, <laughs> if we'd have gone on, we'd have found it, yeah. <laughs> Well, have we got a surprise. The original owner, Pat, gets to be reunited with his long-lost beauty after 31 years. So, Pat, it must be fantastic to see this gem after all these years. It is fantastic because you don't, I don't think you get to the opportunity to ever see your car again, you know. I've had quite a few cars. She's looking a little bit sad. She's a bit weathered and she's covered in dust, but is it effectively still very similar to when you had the car? Yeah, yeah, everything's there. And to see it unchanged is just quite an experience. It's like going back in time. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning. Tell us about the start when you originally bought this car from brand new. I wanted to uh, buy the Phase 3 at the time, but I couldn't afford it. So I waited a little bit longer, saved up some money, and then knew the Phase 4 was coming out, I thought, oh, I'll go for that one. It'll have to be a little bit better than the Phase 3 type of thing. Anyway, I went to the, to the Ford dealership, it was close by, and um, yeah, t or, tried to order one. They told me it was um, unavailable anymore because of the government crackdown on the high-speed cars and that, so, so I just settled on the ordinary GT and had a couple of modifications done through the factory. The Phase 4 extractors from the dealership and then when I got it, the manifold, the carburetor, so the performance was unbelievable. It had a lot of drags in it and uh, it was never beaten once off the line. I had a mate of mine had a Camaro at the time and it was 427 in it and I could still beat Give him as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the 351 Cleveland's a good thing. The right carburetion, manifold and exhaust system, it, it just opens them up, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It's just unbelievable, the, the difference from, from when I got it to when I put the manifold and the carburetor on. Yeah, I had it a few years and uh, hardly did any mileage in it. I bought a house. It was a brand new house and had no garage, no landscaping, no nothing. And uh, I had to sell it to build a garage. I'd love to buy it back though. Well, what a fantastic story this has been. And what this car here has shown me is that there are still hidden gems, hidden treasures out there waiting to be found. Barn finds, if you want to call on that, or survivor cars. Thanks for watching, and we'd really appreciate it if you'd like and comment on this video. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell because there's a lot more content coming your way.